Hi everybody, it's Adam Grubb, Stick and Hack. Welcome in. Year in review, best of moments, whatever you want to call this thing, it is a ride that we want to go on again because we had a massive guest list this year of LPGA and PGA superstars. And we continue the best of the best of with Corey Pavin. And he talks about the shot. He talks about the Ryder Cup. And some of the best moments of the Corey Pavin interview are right now. This is the Stick and Hack Show. Mr. Corey Pavin. Mr. Pavin, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I, I guess I'm a bulldog, I suppose, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, that is what we're told. Uh, that is what we're told. Now, you probably heard, uh, have heard that, that story before. Maybe not that specific story. I don't know if anyone's heard that specific story before. But the, the specific bulldog reference, uh, just before we go any further, uh, do we have that right? I mean, the, what people call you that. Is that a thing? Is that, does that even make sense to you today and back in your playing days? Yeah, yeah. I, I got that nickname a while ago, uh, back in, uh, I guess it'd be the early 90s, uh, that moniker uh, was put upon me. <laughs> well, our, our research team has also indicated that you hold a very cool record. Now, this is lowest strokes needed to complete nine holes. Now, I have a very similar record, the opposite, <laughs> the most strokes, uh, but the lowest strokes needed to complete nine holes in a PGA event at 26. You were eight under. After nine holes, uh, the question, Corey, is what? Is that possible? <laughs> is, that, is that a question? That's or a an question. Ex expletive. Um, yeah, it's both. It's both. You, you choose. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, I didn't actually know that I had shot a 26. I knew I was eight under, but um, I, I didn't realize that it was a par 34 nine holes. So. Um, I found out later that it was a standalone record and it, and that was what 2006 and it's still still a standalone record. There's a lot of guys that have shot 27 and yeah. quite a few of them came up to me afterwards and were not happy with me. <laughs> they did not like that they were off the the first page of the record book, I guess, but uh, um, you know Andy North was one of them who was playing in the tournament and, and he said, man, you just took me off the record book and I said in my nice, bulldoggy way i said well that's just too bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah play better uh yep. imagine imagine mike having somebody come into the clubhouse and you say how are you playing today and everybody always answers the same way right mike ah, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, we're yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, some good nah. some bad yeah i made under next question <laughs> <laughs> i've never been able to say that ever in my life but <laughs> you were a part of a, another great Ryder cup team uh in the war on the shore and uh I remember there was like this, it was, I guess, a controversy that you wore a camo hat. <laughs> I remember yes. this. I always felt like it was completely blown out of proportion. How, how, what was your perspective on that when, when, when that all happened? Yeah. Well, that was interesting. You know, you have to remember when it was. So it was, as you said, 1991. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the Iraq was happening. Yeah. Um, and basically... What the camo thing was, was supporting the troops, uh, which was actually a coalition. And, you know, Europe, <laughs> Europe was part of that coalition. So people are going to interpret things the way they want to. But, um, you know, they thought, well, you know, it's a war, you know, we're battling, you know, and that's why I'm wearing it. Um, I thought it was kind of a cool hat, actually. And, and uh, it was really uh, in support of the troops uh, overseas. And it got blown out of proportion. Somebody said something about it. You know, you know, being a war playing the Ryder Cup, but that had really nothing to do with it. Um, Dave Stockton was our captain, and you know, he ordered these hats. He said, "If you want to wear it, you can wear it." And you know, Dave's a big hunter, so he just thought they were cool, and he wanted to probably have them to go hunting in. Um, and I thought it was fun too. You know, I I thought it was, you know, in a way, the Ryder Cup can be a, I'd say it's more of a battle, a battle amongst um, sort of friends. Um, so it got blown out of proportion a lot. And I think the Europeans got upset that we were wearing it. Uh, Steve Pate and I both wore it. Stockton actually wore a, a hat with a camouflage on it too. And uh, nobody ever said anything about him wearing it. But, you know, if you're a player, you're under a, a little more scrutiny, I guess. That was the, uh, the last great hat controversy uh, right before, Bri <laughs> right before uh, until Bryson came, hit the scene and had his ridiculous hat. Um, so there have been two major hat controversies in, uh, in golf history, I guess. How does, it, how does it feel, though, to be part of, of the U.S. Open lore? Because every uh, clip package 
from that point on uh, of the great U.S. Open moments and even great golf moments. They, they, you've got your Tiger shots. You've got uh, and, and uh, Sergio uh, scissor kicking up the up the fairway. We've got you running after your ball. Uh, any any clip package has that shot and. Even as a casual golf fan who maybe only watches the majors, they're going to know you. They're going to know that shot. They're going to know the mustache. There's a lot about you that people know just from, yeah, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> just from what, what people see in, in the replay. How does that, I can't imagine going back and seeing myself 20 years ago doing something uh, miraculous and being played time and time again, year after year for every U.S. Open. D- does it still give you chills and excitement to see that, or, or are you over? Do you have cush lash? Are you over yourself? <laughs> no, it's still exciting. You know, it's it's a great memory, obviously, and um, you know, it's nice to be remembered for something good. You know, some people remember for messing up or doing something bad, so it's it's nice that it's on the positive end of it. And, and it, yeah, it's nice. You know, it, it seems. You know, almost every week somebody says something about the forward shot or the shot I had in U.S. Open. So it, it's it's always a, a great memory. It's something that I've got in, in, in my head that I can always draw on and think of, you know, that happened. And it, it still gives me confidence to this day. And uh, but it's cool. It's, it is a neat thing when people come up, up to me and say something about it. And, um, you know, hopefully that will last forever. And. You know, if they keep showing it on TV like they do and, and those clips, uh, I think people will remember it. So our, our question wasn't unique? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it before, but it's OK. I don't mind talking <laughs> about it. You know, I'll blame said, producer Shane for that for that miss. Yeah, I'd rather yeah. talk about uh, that my, my, than something bad that happened. So I'm, I'm quite, <laughs> quite happy to talk about it.